Hey guys, so this is the pocket lock tutorial and this was a much requested tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and get into what supplies you'll need. So first up you're going to need these cake boards and I believe they're 14 by 8. They can really be any size but I got these in the cake decorating aisle of Michael's. And you can use any cardboard you want. Um, I chose the cake boards because they're thin, um, they're easy to cut, and they're very inexpensive. So that's the first thing. Okay, next you're going to need some duct tape. So I chose these three colors because um, I'm going to be, this is an order, so those are the three colors I'm going to be using. Next up, you'll be needing a ruler or a cutting board or both. I use both because it's nice to have a, I'll use a ruler for a straight edge. An X-Acto knife or scissors. And I recommend using an X-Acto knife just because it's a little bit easier. If you do use to use scissors, I recommend getting a non-stick titanium scissors. Um, I got these from Westcott, if you're wondering. So, and I really love these scissors. They're great. Um, and I, if you're also wondering, I get a lot of questions what type of X-Acto knife I have. I have a video on my X-Acto knife. But um, if you're wondering, this is a Westcott as well. Um, I also have a video on this. So... And I actually think my ruler's also Westcott, but I just really like their products, so I'm not getting paid to say this. So, anyways, um, and my cutting board is Fiskars. I have the 17 by 11 Fiskars cutting board. Okay, so next up you're also going to need a hot glue gun. This is optional. You can tape down everything, but there's a weird noise coming from my computer. Anyways, sorry. Um, but you can't, I, a hot glue gun would just make everything more sturdy. Next up, you're going to be needing a notebook. I got this pack of two at Michael's. Um, you can also use a planner, but Michael's do, doesn't sell planners anymore, the right size. So I had to pick up these notebooks. And honestly, if you just want a notebook, look how beautiful these look. They're really pretty. But we're going to be covering these with duct tape. All right. And I believe that's everything you'll be needing. Um, oh. Some optional things, Velcro and magnets. And so this is the first part of the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I also have a new camera and new setup. So I hope you guys enjoy the new setup. So that's it. Bye, guys. Enjoy the video. Okay, so first you're going to take your cardboard and cut it into parts for your binding outside. And you're going to make sure that it fits your notebook, whichever one you're using. For mine, the length is going to be 6 inches and the width is going to be 4.5 inches. So if you're using these the same booklet as me, go ahead and make yours um, 6 inches by 4.5 inches. And the way you find out your measurement is make sure there's about a fourth of an inch um, around your notebook. So I'm just cutting it here, cutting out two pieces because that's all you'll need for your binding, other binding, whatever it's called. And now I'm uh, making it, so I'm lining it up so there's two inches in between the uh, thing, the square, the cardboard. <clears throat> now I'm cutting two pieces of six inch tape. Well, I'll do four inch four pieces of six inch tape in total. And I'm going to um, set two aside here. So first you're going to leave that two inch gap right there, and you're going to put one piece on and overlap it a three fourths of an inch uh, onto the cardboard, and then put another one overlap a half of an inch onto the cardboard. Now flip it over, and then just cover up the sticky. Make sure you are overlapping on some of the card. Okay, so next is we're gonna make the inside flap thing. I'm gonna call it the inside flap. So what you're gonna be doing is cutting four pieces of six inch tape. And this is if you are using my measurements. If you are not using my measurements, make it the length of your cardboard and you want it on the width a fourth of an inch less or a half of an inch less it depends mine I'm doing the width three and three fourths because it would have been four inches if I didn't um, and it's just easier to do it at three and three fourths and at four inches so yeah now I'm just making this flat by putting four pieces together as you just saw very simple just like a wallet next up what I'm gonna be doing is making the 
insides for the flap. So this is going to be everything that goes on the flap. So first I start off with um, some card pockets. I do two. So you're going to need, for each card pocket, you need three pieces of three and three fourths inches tape. And you're just going to put them on together, just very simply, just as normal. Alrighty. <clears throat> I have my ID here, and now I'm going to do the Ziploc coin pouch. So, you're going to cut a piece that is three and a half inches long, and you want to make this a fourth of an inch shorter than your width of your inside pouch that your inside pocket that you're using. Now you're going to cut another piece of another sheet of duct tape that's the same measurements as your other inside pouch. So this is going to be the opposite side on the coin pouch. <clears throat> so again, if you're following my measurements, that would mean your new piece you're making is six inches by three and three fourths inches. And as you can see here, I'm just cutting pieces of tape to attach the Ziploc to the top of my inside pouch. Just folding it over. It's exactly the same as how to make a coin pouch. I have a tutorial on this if you would like more in-depth uh, details on it. And just making sure everything still lines up. And I'm grabbing my other piece of duct tape. And I'm getting... Um, two more pieces of six inch, six inch tape to go ahead and put it on top of the sticky so I can cover it up. And I, I accidentally cut mine a little short so that's what that little piece is. So here I am making my duct tape sheet. And now <clears throat> I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did the, with the other one. I'm going to get a piece of duct tape, cut it in half, and then tape it on to the top of the duct tape sheet that I just made as you can see like I'm doing here. And then I'm going to take another piece of duct tape and I'm just going to secure down the Ziploc pouch just a little bit more by attaching it to the sides as you can see I'm doing here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put them on top of each other so clasp the, duct, the Ziploc together and then you're going to cut off any um, excess tape so I'm going around and I only do three sides usually so I can keep it in like a nice square. <laughs> so I do the top, the bottom, and then I pick one of the sides to trim off. And if you also if you trimmed off the top like I did, don't forget to re-trim it. You'll see I do that at the very end. Now we're going to make the T pocket that goes on the Ziploc coin pouch. So you're going to make a duct tape sheet that is three inches by three inches. And I do this because I can follow along my cutting board and make a perfect T. So I make a cut at one inch halfway and then another at one inch, at two inches halfway. And then I make slits out to the side just to form a T. So it's very simple. Just basically cut a T with duct tape. Now I'm going to trim the top of the T. So you can see me doing here. And just cutting off some excess. And now I'm going to trim the sides. So I have both of the long sides to the base of the T and then the underneath of the T, as you can see in, right here. Don't worry about trimming off the sides and the bottom because that'll be covered by duct tape. Okay. So I'm putting on my T. I'm getting a whole piece of duct tape. Don't cut it. Uh, you want to barely cover the T. I usually cover about three eighths of an inch to one fourth of an inch. Um, so now you're going to cover up the sides. And what I'm doing here is I cover the T by a half of an inch, and then I'm just going to trim down the duct tape until I have it about a half of an inch as well on the other side. Just so it doesn't look sloppy and like you don't have this huge piece of tape folding over because I don't like the way that looks. So as you can see, I'm cutting it down one more time, and there you go. I think it looks pretty good, so I'm going to trim the edges off. And then next, I'm just going to do the exact same thing with the other side. And then as you can see here, I'm just cutting off again some excess and folding it over. 
And now I'm just going to cut some slits in the card pockets. Okay, and now um, I'm just re-trimming the top because if you remember, I had to trim some of it off uh, to make it more even. Okay, so next we're going to attach the inside flap to the binding. And what I'm doing here is taking some of my Justin Bieber tape and just going to attach it. And as you can see, I like to attach it closer to the front than I do in the back. So when I flip it over, you'll see the, there's more room in the back. And I use the lines I use for the trimming to uh, know that my piece of tape I'm putting on is straight. Now I'm just going to go and cut all of everything out. I, as you can see, like I'm doing here. All right. And then that's basically everything. That's the first half. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed part one. Part two is coming up, so make sure your hot glue gun is ready to go.